Hi, Sagittarians, <laughs> my smashy Saggies. My name is Abby. Welcome to your reading. Uh, this is going to be from the time frame of June 1st to 15th, 2021. I am going to pull a couple oracle cards just to first take the temperature of what might be happening during this period of time or what you need to be aware of. Okay. And then I'm going to pull tarot and I'm going to clarify. For any of you who are curious, this is the Wisdom of the Oracle. Um, another deck called the Energy Oracle. Okay. Very nice. And then uh, this is the Marchetti Tarot and the Lightseer's Tarot. Okay. So first off, and this one didn't want to uh, take its time being revealed. It flipped itself right over. We have Blossoming Abundance. So this feels like some things are starting to sort of pay some dividends, right? Something is starting to pay you back. Abundance can be financial and it can also be emotional. It can be about family, having a lot of people around us. Happy, happy, gorgeous energy, right? This is talking all about, this is all about being lighthearted. It's like, let yourself laugh. Let yourself enjoy things. Um, don't take things too seriously. Enjoy the little things, right? Um, and it feels like, uh, Sagittarius, having that kind of lighthearted, happy energy can be very useful in things like your manifestations. So you could be seeing that sort of pay off where it's like you've been maybe asking for things or focusing on things and, and trying to get them going. And it's like the more that you let yourself kind of let go and have fun, the more you start to see these rewards come in. Okay. Very, very nice. So with the rest of the spread... Remember to only take the stuff that makes sense to yourself and your life. Leave the rest for whoever needs it. We don't need to be getting stressed out about card readings we saw on YouTube, okay? I hope to help you guys and provide some guidance and maybe some entertainment or company on your lunch break or whatever you happen to be doing. We don't have to be getting all stressed out about it, okay? Everyone's welcome. Cross watchers too. You're all good. Okay. My goodness. So at the bottom of the deck here, we have the six of wands. This is like m big time and like winner energy here, Sag. Um, this is like coming out at the end of a battle and being the one who's like, you know, holding the holding the trophy, holding the the cup there. So there could be some kind of energy there was something that you have been probably putting some time, energy, and effort into is starting to pay off. This could have to do with work, all right, um, or your own self-improvement, working on yourself. In your past energy that you're going to be moving out of here, we have the Nine of Swords, the Seven of Swords, and the Eight of Wands. Now, I do like to see that you're moving out of that energy, right? Seven of Swords is like, can be trickery or deception. It can be things not being what they seem. It can even be for some, it's like self-deception or it can be trying to take on too much and not asking for help, like trying to get away with something. Um, and it's like that kind of energy where we're like, ah, I don't want to bother anybody. I'll just do all this stuff. And like if you just asked a friend to help you, you know, or you asked our professional of some kind to help you or a family member, a boss, a colleague, it wouldn't be an issue, right? But we sometimes try to carry stuff without... Um, really taking care of ourselves here we have the eight of wands so fast movement communication possibly even some travel for you sag a lot of you are into that and then we have the nine of swords down here so some anxieties about things a little bit of fear let me see what this is about it's good to see you're walking you're walking away from it here though with that eight of cups so there's Whatever this Seven of Swords is about, it could have to do with something you're holding on to, something or someone, a comfort zone that you might not be sure that you want to leave, uh, especially if this thing gave you a feeling of stability, like it's predictable, you can count on it, you're like, well, I may not like it, it may not be perfect, but at least I know what to expect, you know, it's that kind of energy. It can be a little bit of a settling energy, you know, like, uh, I guess I'll, like, this is good enough, you know what I mean? With the Eight of Wands, you have the Two of Swords. So this feels like things in your physical world, okay? This middle row can be your physical world, and it's like things start to move fast. Maybe you get a bunch of communication, and then you're just like, well, I don't really have enough information. I'm not really sure which way to go on this. 
And so it's kind of a bit of a standstill because it's like, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do <laughs> with all of this information. So I'm just going to hang out here and just like wait and see for a minute because I need to kind of collect myself like this is a lot. So for some, this can be like offers of love or it can just be like job offers coming in. It can be travel like, oh, you can have a new job or an opportunity you've been waiting for, but you have to totally uproot, right? That can cause some kind of like deer in headlights, kind of like, whoa, what the hell is this? Okay, strength with the nine of swords. So I feel like this is more so guidance. This could have to do with possibly a Leo person, okay? Some of you could be dealing with a Leo who kind of gets on your nerves, <laughs> tests your patience. You have to take like, it's something that you have to kind of uh, deal with or you could be experiencing some anxieties over that. For others, I feel like, it's kind of like you've had anxieties and maybe some sleepless nights and some worries, but you've, you've managed to weather it with grace and with um, strength here. Patience. You have in your middle row the Ace of Wands, the Eight of Cups, and the Six of Swords. So you have two cards that are talking about moving on and improvements, going towards the things that are going to serve you the best. For some, this could be... Um, like an inspiration even to move on from a relationship, from an area. Uh, you could be moving, and by area, I mean like city, state, country, okay? That kind of thing. Because it feels like in your, in your mind, you're almost like thunderstruck with an idea, something that makes you wake up in the, the beginning of the day and go like, okay, I think I know what I'm going to do with this, right? <laughs> I think I know what I'm going to do and where I'm going to take it. And so the Eight of Cups comes in to be a journey that says, you know, they have all kinds of things in these cups, and they're all perfectly good things. There's nothing wrong with them, but there's something more, right? There's something more to reach for. And the Six of Swords is like possibly travel, um, but it's, it's taking all of your lessons and moving on somehow. So for some of you, it feels like whatever this transition that it's talking about, I think it's something you may have felt coming for a while or that you're very much ready for. We have the Emperor having a plan, mature Aries energy. This is really beautiful. You could also have a very flirtatious or passionate connection with another fire sign, particularly in Aries. Um, very, very nice. Some of you could have Aries placements in your charts, or you could have, regarding whatever this passion is, whether it's a person, place, or thing, job, whatever it's connected to, some of you may have like a, a bit of control like a control thing going on. Like I'm going, I want to make a move, right? I want to go from the four, this foundational energy of the pentacles to the emperor in a large scale foundational. But it's like, I'll only make that move if it's, I, if, it, if it's for sure going to work, <laughs> right? It's a little conditional almost. Um, which I mean, hey, Sometimes we do have to wait for more energy. I feel like this is you charging forward in this Eight of Cups. You could be dealing with another fire sign, possibly someone who's kind of inconsistent. This could also be your own. The night is like, I tend to think of it as like spurts, right? Like the way that you see fire burn when we think about fire signs, right? How it's like you'll get these little bursts, right? That's kind of like a page. And then you get these more sustained bursts, but like they're not consistent, right? And then you start to get a fire, and that's like queen energy, where it's like this beautiful, slow burn, smoldery kind of energy. And then the king of wands is like a whole damn bonfire, right? Which I feel like that's what you're building up towards here, energetically. Very, very nice. Oh, this is two. What do we have here? Nine of swords again in the star. Yeah. You're, this six of swords here is just like moving on from these kind of anxieties and nightmares and wondering all the what ifs and getting stuck there because it feels like you've weathered some grace. You've probably mustered up the courage to try and tackle this and recognize it and go, this isn't what I want to be doing or living. Um, and then deciding to go towards your beautiful Aquarian energy of the star here, right? Could be an Aquarius person, but you know, some of you, if there is a relationship here that it's talking about, um, what's showing up here would be more indicative of maybe a breakup. Uh, there could be going from one relationship to another, or there could be moving to be with someone in particular. OK, 
okay? Something like that. But for others, this is really just, you know, I've, I've recognized that I've had sometimes have a tendency to go into this place in my subconscious that's full of anxiety and fear. And I'm, I'm choosing to move on from that. And I'm moving towards hope and towards healing and towards, you know, putting myself in center stage, treating myself um, with glorious self-respect. It's really beautiful. Okay, we have in your last row here, the King of Wands, the Ten of Wands, and the Two of Cups. So this could either be you, Sagittarius, or another fire sign. Beautiful union. Two of Cups can be soulmate type energy. If this isn't talking about a personal connection, then it's things like your relationship with your higher self, you know, uh, being, in you, being in harmony, having things be mutually beneficial. If it's something like a business arrangement, it's like finding your perfect business partner where you just work off each other really well. You give to them, they give to you. Everything just kind of flows in place. You do have the Ten of Wands here, so it feels like something is closing out. Um, and I feel like with these two eights here and this kind of night energy, this could be something that has been trying to close for a while. So this would indicate if there's something that you've been tr struggling to close out, it, this could suggest that that time is coming, right? Where it's sort of like the last straw, the last stuff, uh, getting that stuff all squared away. And then this relief that comes, right, from getting all those wands off your back. Yeah, hell yeah. You're graduating, Sag. You're graduating. You're moving up. You're closing cycles in a big way. And you're moving on to new ones because there's all of this blossoming abundance, all of this like positivity and victory that's kind of hanging out here for you. Beautiful. You could be moving on to a whole new phase in life. King of Wands again. So it's leadership, right? For some of you, you could be maybe closing out a circle or a cycle with a particular person, okay? Or you could be realizing that the way that your relationship works with someone um, the world card, for instance, like people tend to be like a cycle closes and then you leave and you do something else. And that can be one interpretation of it. But I mean, the world card can also be when we're moving through different phases, like in a relationship, for instance, you know, there's the honeymoon phase, right? And the honeymoon phase only lasts for like a few months to a couple years, maybe. And then after that part of the relationship falls away, it either has to level off or level up or stop, right? Because, or you just kind of, I guess, some people maybe settle and accept it at its, its, its first level or whatever. But I think most people kind of go like, okay, so what is this? Or are we really doing it? Or we, because once you stop being like all excited and tingly around someone in the beginning, it's like you're de you're dealing with that real person with the real real right? A, a whole ass human being with all of their problems and all of their past and all of their intricacies and complexities as a person. And it's a, it's a leveling up. It's a different kind of thing. And it takes a different kind of responsibility. So that doesn't necessarily mean a connection ends, but it's at least the way the connection is has to change. And for some of you, it could be about you taking more leadership and talking about what you're willing to accept Okay, Ten of Wands can be an energy of having said yes too much to too many projects or responsibilities or things. Um, so you could be setting some boundaries as far as that go. Yeah, because ultimately, whatever you do there as far as setting those healthy boundaries and putting things down, hi baby, move please, move please, thank you. Sorry guys, this is Lucy, could you move please? There's nothing here for you. Get your butthole out of here. Okay, so <laughs> moving towards family abundance, legacy, family tree, that kind of thing, right? Really, really beautiful. But this four of cups energy, or two of cups energy down here. Wow, that's a lot, but it feels right. Two of pentacles, making a choice some truth or communication and it leading towards possibly marriage, possibly engagement or a celebration, a recommitment of some kind. This is really nice energy here too. So something here is leveling up for you and is, I feel like probably going to make you feel like a winner here, Sagittarius. Ooh, and we have Queen of Cups at the bottom. This is loving, right? Filling your own cup, creative, empathic, 
could be a water sign energy that's of importance to you during this time. Where are we at for time now? Okay, so I'm going to pull a couple of Lenormans for you, and then I'm going to see if we can get any indications of circumstances, people, or events, things that Sagittarius might need to be mindful of for their highest good during this period of time, please. June 1st to the 15th, 2021. Almost everybody's been getting this, the home card. This is all about stability. Your home base, it can literally mean your home and family. Um, so that could be of some kind of importance to you. The book, okay, so this is all about knowledge. Something that you might need to gain knowledge on. Um, okay, but we'll see what it is. We'll see what it is. Okay, public. Well, this is called the park, but it has to do with like networking, community, and the whip. Okay. Okay. So, knowledge and the public. So, you could be going back to school or either receiving or giving some kind of public education about something. Could also be some networking. I feel like as you, you learn something in particular... Um, because I think there's a focus on stability or home or household or something like that, then it's like there's a certain knowledge or something, and I mean, Saggies are, are often scholars and stuff like that, right? You guys are super interesting, brainy type people, um, but also very passionate with that sort of wanderlust, and so it feels like there could be something that you're either educating, um, you're educated by the public on something, so this could be that you maybe you see some news event or you see something that sparks an interest and then it starts you in some some particular direction. Uh, the whip here is kind of like about there being sort of a frenzy or maybe some conflict. So this feels to me like if it's connected to the park, then there might be um, you see some kind of maybe a current event or there's something like that and that. Um, might motivate you to take a certain direction in your education. And you just get very curious. This could be talking about a child in particular. You got the child card, but it, it's also a card of childlike wonder and curiosity. Okay. And anything else I need to know? And the rider. Okay, so then messages, travel, things kind of happening fast. The rider is um, about us having opportunities, us often re receiving messages or having new beginnings of some kind. Um, but it's not, it's one of those things we have to take advantage of, right? It's not like it's going to be there and it's going to be an option you can always go towards. There could be a bit of a, like you're presented with an opportunity that you then have to choose on whether or not to take. And it's going to, it's going to depend on how curious you are, I think. But I feel like there is something here that's going to possibly spark your curiosity towards your time and during this time about that. Okay. Sag, this is what I got for you this time. I hope something in here was interesting or entertained you or gave you some kind of comfort or even company um, while you're just kind of going about your day and doing your thing. I hope that you enjoy the next couple weeks. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to have you um, like the video or comment. That really helps out. There's also a uh, giveaway I'm doing. I have two channels. I'm doing, I'm doing a giveaway on each channel. Um, so there's some little rules down below if you want to check those out. And I will hopefully see you on the next one. Okay, take care of yourself. Bye now.